all praise to the Most High and Son. We're going to jump right into it today. Family generational curses, man. That's a real thing. That's very, very, very real. Very real of a family generational curse. That's right. That's, that's. That's the product of our environment. That's right. It's having a negative effect on Israelite parenthood. That's right. That's right. Now, I could go. Today, I'm just going to be talking about man, woman, and child. Right? That's all I'm going to be dealing with today. I could go left and could go right, but just stay with me today. I'm talking about a man and a woman coming together to produce a child. Why do you think that there's a lack of education in the neighborhood? Who are the first teachers of the parent? Who are the first teachers of the children? Bring it out. Should be the parents. Why are we on the bottom? Something's not right. What are we doing to fix it? You'll come to find out what we're doing is the same thing that our mom and dad did. Bring it out. And the same thing that their mother and dad did. That's right. And that was our time. And we're doing the same damn thing. The same damn thing. When are we gonna change? Yeah. When? Who's gonna take responsibility? Who's going to step up? Yeah. You know, some of these guys, man. You know, some of these guys. They don't take care of their children. Bring it out. They just said, you know what I'm saying? They don't take care of their children. That's right. And these mothers, some of them use their children as pawns. Bring it out. Weapons of warfare. Bring it out. That's what they do. Very selfish. And you sitting there raising a monster. So what's the next generation going to be like? Bring it out. That great granddaddy was a liar. Built up your daddy to be a liar. And built up you to be a liar. Bring it out. And you building them up underneath you to be a liar. Generational curses. The mother. Anger issues. Blowing the top. Where'd she get that from? Bring it out. Probably the one that was raising her. Blowing the top on her. Probably when she was three. And four. And five. And two. And a toddler. Blowing the top on her. So now. She has a child. What do you think she's doing to her child? Probably blowing the top off of her. These sisters, and you know, you, you, you know, you know, these sisters, you know, in the world, man, it's so romantic to become a wife. That's just the, what that man, he gonna get down on that knee. He, 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 gonna, he gonna have that two carrot thing busting out. And she crying. This is this is this is all I had. This is what I wanted. Bring it out. Mama told you how to destroy the house. Bring it out. Same thing with the men. They call themselves husbands, fathers, but a lot of brothers, men, they're just sending their check. Who's 
going to change this? Bring it out. Yeah. Bring it out. And this is running deep in the truth. It ran real deep. This is the place to where you come and change That's right. your mind. Your mindset. Let's get spiritual. Pull up the show. And these are things, man. These, these, these are things that I'm bringing realism to this. I can woo you, man. Trust me. I got you. I can woo you. Woo it I. I can. Believe me. But what I notice, man, that don't change a damn thing. It don't change nothing. It doesn't. So I just want to bring something to the forefront. First lot. What 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 is a parent? What what is a parent? What's the definition of a parent? A lot of us grew up with our parents, period. Mainly single woman households. And the next after that is grandparents. And then it's mother and father. What is a parent? You got one that brings forth an offspring. A person who brings up and cares for another. You know, it's a lot of people in positions to be parents in the truth and ain't doing a damn thing. Bring it out. Nothing. But I'm not going there today. A mother slash father of a person or animal or someone who takes care of a person in the same way as a parent does. So you can be in a position to be somebody's parent without actually being that person's parents. Step daddies and step mamas. Right. Right? It's a person who is responsible for the upbringing, the teacher of basic knowledge, wisdom, and understanding about life. It is the teacher of basic knowledge, wisdom, and understanding about life. What did mama teach you about life, sister? Why you don't know how to move? Why you? Why is everything brand new to you, bro? Everything is new. Everything brand new. You don't know nothing. Bring it out. How? What? What? Is that the school fault? Is that the education fault? What? Why do we have so many slave mentalities in the black neighborhoods? Who's Who's responsible for that? Yes, man. Let's go back. Next slide. What's the definition of a father? We slang that term around so loosely. A lot of us had a man in our life and never had a father. Bring that up. Let me say that again. A lot of us had a man in our life. He was a man and he was in our lives. But he was not a father. Bring that right. out. That's about 90% of us. The old generation, they did good, man. They paid bills and stuff. But if you look at the ones as my age, eh. Bring it out. Getting slim. Bring it out. Real slim. The definition of a father is a male parent, obviously. It's the man, right? The father is the man. Right? And it's a term that you address your father as your father. Right? It's a it's a man who raises the child. It's the man that raised the child. But this is this is what a father normally is. A father 
is a man who usually performed the offices of the maintenance of the family. Affectionate care, the counsel of the family, and the protection of the family. It's normally what a father is. The maintenance of the family, keeping everybody in check, man. Making sure everybody is good. The maintenance of the family, whatever family maintenance that the family needs. Affectionate care is what a father is, man. Affectionate care. The counsel of the family normally comes from the father. The protection of the family normally comes from the father. That's right. This is basic concepts. The father is normally the foundation of the family right. or the founder of the family. Right. The foundation. That's what a father is. You know, and just on these, just, just four points alone, it's looking slim. It says a male parent with parental instincts who chooses to act with unconditional love towards his children, bringing the unity and the peace in the house. And the man nurtures the family by non-judgmental judgment. Keep that balance. Normally when the father comes in, he gonna tell the wife the truth, she not gonna like it. He gonna tell the children the truth, they not gonna like it. But he gives non-judgmental judgment. That's what the father does. Non-judgmental judgment. He keeps the balance in the house. On the right hand side. Right? It's a person who holds an important or distinguished position in some organizations. Now, that I'm going to save that, right? Because we need more fathers in Israel. And, and, and it does not, it does not, your age is not a requirement. That's right. Understand that. Please understand that. It's not a requirement. Next slide. What's the definition of a mother? Basic concepts, a woman who gives birth to a child, a woman who raises a child. But the female parent or the mother has a maternal instinct and chooses to act with care. The mother has to normally act in a selflessness role in bringing the wisdom. And the woman nurtures the family normally with tenderness, with delicateness, and the rational thinking. Keeps the balance. The father keeps the balance. The mother keeps the balance. If the father is the foundation of the family, then the mother is the bricks of the house. That's right. She the bricks. If the father is the foundation, the mother is the bricks. And a mother produces. Produces. Next slide. Now, what about you? Realistically, like, what about you? Are you a father and are you a mother? Seriously. Really think about that. And for the brothers that's on the spiritual level, are you a father for real? Bring it out. Or is it just all game, man? Are you a mother for real? Or is it just all talk? One thing. I try to get people that come into church. I try to get people to realize that the truth is not when you're in the church. The truth is your actions outside of the church. Right. Anybody can do this, man. Anybody can come into the congregation and be holy. What Granny say on the uh? What Granny say she was on the corner last weekend, bro? She she said she was uh she blessed and highly favored. She was blessed and highly favored. Bring it out. 
Everybody blessed in church. Do you understand that? Everybody good. Everybody holy. Everybody keeping the commandments in church. Everybody is, man. But it's about your actions outside the church. That's right. That's right. Outside the church. And that's what I'm trying to drive home in the people. Outside the church. Are you a mother and are you a father? Brothers, are you taking care of your children? Bring it out. Sisters, what 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 are you doing? Next slide. Are you a product of the generational curses in your family? Are you a product of that? Right it's a term that, that be that be said all the time, and that term is said. The apple wood don't fall far from the tree. Every time somebody say that, is it normally positive reason why they say it or is it negative? Bring it out. That's right. If you go to somebody and say the apple don't fall far from the tree, normally negative. That's right. That's right. Normally. Like normally. Or else you wouldn't say it. You know what I mean? So bad? Are, are you are you are you a product of your mother and your father or your upbringing and do you display the same type of characteristics the same bad habits the same emotional physical mental distress that may have happened to you are you doing that as well in your life You see how that hit, man? You see how that hit? Some of us right now playing back how crazy our mama was. Bring it Damn. Out. Bring it out. Bring Off the Kool-Aid? Bring it out. Be everybody in the house because you was wrong. Bring it out. You embarrassed. Yeah. Damn, Dad. Nobody even said nothing. Just going off on everybody. That's right. Nobody did nothing. Everybody happy but you. Bring it out. Are, 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 are we literally doing the same? Give me this first video. And to Zion, I want you to stay with me because we got to stop this video at certain points. No, not that one. Not that one. I want the other one. Come on. Watch this video, man. Watch this video. And take deep consideration. Deep consideration. When you see this. Deep consideration. When you look at this. 318, play the video. This my little man. I'm your little man. All you do is pray back and women talk back to my mom all the time. That's another time. Why don't you go visit your grandma? But mom! I said, that's, that's enough. enough. Okay. You need to get that little nigga fine, right? I done done way more for that nigga than his father. That one done. You need to show me a little more appreciation. Why? Because it's just like he said, you do the same thing his daddy used to do. Talking down on me every chance y'all get. So don't be sitting up here faking like you any better than the next man you damn near. Let's get your mind clear. Me and that nigga on the same page. I take care of those two girls upstairs. You ain't never had to ask nobody for nothing for my kids. You right, but that's because I was too proud to ask. It damn sure wasn't because of you. What's that supposed to mean? It means we barely keeping it together around you. If you wasn't wasting money, money trying, trying to keep up with this rapper image, image, we wouldn't be struggling as much. Saying it like it's important or something. Like my dream ain't our dream no more. But like you don't want to get a son of a section How many times have I been telling you? Tell him don't pay no bills around here. You got a two and a half year old and an eight month old Upstairs again. Newsflash, there ain't no such thing as a supermarket where I can pay for formula and chemicals with my baby daddy's dreams. I need currency in this reality, Amanda, not dreams. See, 
See, that's the problem right there. Please tell me what the problem is. I just got to hear this. Oh, this nigga divinity is the problem. That's what. I've been having a mental block for the longest now. Yeah, yeah, it's all clear to me now. I see you now. Hold up. Let me get this straight. So you trying to tell me that me being stressed about not having the money to pay the bills is causing all this negativity that's blocking your creativity somehow? Is that what you're trying to tell me? Damn right, that's what I'm saying. I ain't think a black man wants to come up in this world he don't even feel belief inside his own house. I mean, I'm about to close because I got a bit of a son. I got to be who I say I am a West. You know this. I never said that I didn't know that sacrifices had to be made. But you never said there'll be days when we'll be going without electricity for your dreams, Amanda. So what would you have me do, Michaela? What do you want me to do? Get a job? Of course I want you to get a job, fool. Of course I want you to bring a steady paycheck in this house every week. Why wouldn't I? Or would you rather I take care of babies all day? Find a way to work a nine to five so I can come home, pay the bills, and give you money for food, clothes, and studio time. And stop making me feel like I'm the one that's crazy for wanting more. Nah, nah, you're not crazy for wanting more, but you are crazy for expecting me not to want more. Yo, what? Go to 336. Play it. Bring this in your camera? And ain't no way in hell I'm riding that great to sit in the damn cubicle somewhere. I gotta be willing to take risks with what I believe in. Or something to mind and they slave without a clue. Why can't you have a steady job and still chase your dreams? I don't get it. You're a man with a family. You got certain obligations in life that precede those dreams. So I would think the least you would do is prioritize. That's because you whitewashed like 85% of society is, man. Y'all thinking y'all being responsible and prioritizing, but y'all really being forced to live your lives in a certain box. So by you telling me to go get a job all the time is the same as telling the king to go be a slave. You know what, Amanda? Me telling you to go out and get a job all the time is not the same thing as me telling the king to go be a slave. Because for one, a woman wouldn't have to tell a king how to provide for his family. Because he'll already be doing it. And for two, why you keep talking about this slave talk? Like somebody wants to feel sorry for you every time you bring up the word slave or something. Go to 502. That's why I keep bringing it up. Because the black man and the sister is designed for the black man to stay at the bottom of the food chain. And I happen to be both to that fact and how the world sees me. So it's my mission and passion to manifest this great. Well, the black man was the only one that went through slavery. So I'm tired of hearing you and everybody else talk about how hard it is for a black man out here. Hell, it's like my mama used to always say the black man just stood by just wants us to get raped. How the hell y'all got the nerve to always be complaining to us? Y'all do it worse than the slave master. But at least we knew all he wanted was sex. But you black bastards would rather play with our emotions than leave us to raise your baby by ourselves. You talking that evil man? Ain't your original mama be talking up in this house? Y'all destroying black families before they even get a chance to blossom by planting those poisonous type seeds. I want my daughters to grow up on that foolishness your mama done taught you. How is it foolishness, Amanda? What? You want to talk back? Well, let's talk back. For the black man, all slavery did was snatch his pride and date me. Pause it. Now. The thing, this, 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 this is what y'all, this is what I want you to realize. You do know earlier he said it was two children upstairs. You think they can't feel that? Bring it out. Bring it out. Do you think they can't hear that? You think they can't comprehend that? If I put a camera in some of y'all houses, it'll look like that with fringes on. Bring it out. But, you know, that's a little bit too real. Bring it out. It's a little bit too real. What what does that do to the daughter? Everything good. Huh? I don't know if you heard the lady in the, you know, obviously this is acting, bro. You know what I'm saying? But damn, this is so real. You see how what she said in there? She said, yeah, uh-huh. It's just like my mama said. Damn. I bet her mama told her that when she was eight. Nine. Ten. Bring it out. And it's stuck with her for the rest of her life. 
is stuck with them. Two girls upstairs, remember, re remember that. Two girls upstairs. What what now? I'm asking you, what 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 do you think that they're gonna normally what are they gonna do when they grow up? Probably the same thing that their mama was doing. Right. Let's go to the slideshow. And this is having an effect on us in the truth bad, and it's getting exposed. That's right. That's right. It's getting exposed. So to the next slide. Uh, and these are questions. Who taught you how to be a parent? Who taught you how to raise your children? Yeah. Who taught you? Was it your dad? If I ask any brother in here if he was raised by his dad, what did your dad teach you? Put me on the screen. What? No, no, no. Put me on the on the, on the, on the small. What did your dad teach you about raising children? Bring that out. Anything? No. Anybody? With the mothers. See what I'm saying? Are you doing the same things your parents did to you? Are you doing that to your children? Bring it out. Bring it out. Bring it out. The same ways, the same behaviors, the same. Because my dad always told me growing up, you'll never know somebody until you live with them. That's when you really know them. And I learned that when I first got to college and I had to get roommates. And I thought I thought my homies was all cool and stuff, and then I found out this nigga nasty, man. That's right. He don't like he don't like to take baths. He's, he's nasty. That's right. yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But on the outside looking in, you'll never know that. Right? Yeah. So when I'm talking about how it was when you was growing up as a little child, y'all remember them toxic ass situations? Toxic as hell. Dangerous as hell. Just a just a just an environment full of darkness. Are you doing the same thing that your parents did to you? Are you doing that to your children? What are you teaching your children? Bring it out. What are you teaching them? And for the brothers, man, that are spiritually in a father position in the congregation, this applies to you as well. Bring it out. But it's like I say, I'm not dealing with that today. But if you're in the spirit, take it as that. That's right. What are you teaching them? Right now, this is what we're going to do. Name something other than what the school system, the television, Instagram, the social media, the cartoons teaches them. Name, name something other than that that you have taught them and they have learned it. Yeah. What? Be quiet. That's hot. No. Bring it out. No. What have you taught? It. And the reason why it's like I say, you bring this type of stuff up, you know, it'd be these right there. It'd be that. Out, when, you, when, you, when you bring realism to it, it'd be like this. Because think about your life. What your mama teach you? How to do what? What about your father? He taught you how to do what? Bring it out. Huh? What? Back to the second question. Are you doing the same thing that your parents did to you? Are you passing down that generational curse to your children? Is that what you're doing? Name something, man. Something. Other, 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 other than the school system, the television, 
or with Instagram pumping on the reels and social media going crazy, the 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 cartoons. What 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 have you taught? What? What have you instilled in them? What? Okay, God. Are we are we raising our children to be Israelites at home? Oh, oh, let's not go there, Deke. Let's not go there. Let's not go there. That's a little bit too real. See, what I notice is in the truth, man, you could you could you could you could, you could be an Israelite in the church. But are we raising our children? To be Israelites at home? Bring it out, bring it out. Is it a is it a Hebrew way of thinking at home? Or is it just fringes on the t shirts and we come to church every Saturday now? Bring it out. See, 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 see. That's a little bit that's a little bit too real. I'm gonna ask it again. Are we raising our children to be Israelites at home? Bring that out. In the way that you thinking, in the way that you run your household, is it a Hebrew way of thinking? The mindset, is it a Hebrew way of thinking? Or essentially, is it just, hey, you come in the truth? I put the tassels on my t-shirt now, and I go to church on Saturdays instead of Sundays. Bring it out. Is that what it is? And for some of us, we get trapped in being parents, too. You know what I'm saying? We get trapped, you know, in one-night stands and stuff. And, you know, children be coming, and they're not even really planned on it. It just, boom, just popped up happening, right? You know what I'm saying? And some of us, we get to that point, we don't even want to be parents no more. We wish we could sell the child on eBay or per joints. The Gucci belt. We'll exchange the child for five grand. They'll take a dip. Bring it out. See, see, this that, this that. Again, are you doing the same thing that your parents did to you? Or are you doing it to them? Bring it out. Give me this next video. Now, some of us probably already seen this before. When you make a child, the child's DNA is going to be the DNA of the mother and the father. That's right. You do understand that. Yeah. So when the child is born, you are looking at yourself. That's right. Yeah. Physically, right? But it's gonna be some things that your child gonna do. You be like, damn, yeah, that's me, that's right? Sons, daughters. Let me give you an example. Play the video. Yeah. Now, you have a child in this predicament right here. What do you do? Do you do what your mother did to you? Or do you do what your father did to you? Or are you renewed in your mind? Bring it out. This situation right here, we all done been in it, bro. All of us. Bring it out. That situation right there. This this right here. Uh, uh. Uh, no tears, just delusional. You know what I'm saying? Just emotional. Bring it out. What do you do? Play the video. people man you know this is how I talk to children like you you know what I'm saying none of the baby talk that's right 
Frank, none of that. Full fledged conversation. That's right. And you know, some people get on me, you know, little children. Yeah. Just like how Bring I was. That's right. Bring it out. And just how, how you would. That's right. Play the video. I ain't moving until I want to move. I don't have to. We don't have to walk around the store with your mom. That's a privilege. 221, you spoiled it a lot of your kids. This is what happens. And see, that's our fault for being raised as ghetto kids and never had anything. And see, people don't know how to tell their kids no, even though they was spoiled or not spoiled. I don't care if you grew up with a silver spoon in your mouth. Don't put one in your child's mouth because this is what happens. And then when you have to be stern and they don't like it because they spoiled, this is what they act like. I'm okay with the kids screaming at Walmart, but I'm not okay with them not stopping when I tell them to. So we can be bored out here in this lovely old parking lot until Miss Arby's wants to stop screaming her head off. Spoiled kids walk around with Walmart with tablets and phones. It's cool if it keeps them occupied, but they can't be watching what they're not supposed to be watching. That's the Sarge problem. I'm not raising my kids to be like that. I hope you ain't raising your kid to be like that. You can have all the amenities, but we're not doing that in my household. Don't care. They will listen, and they will be made to listen, or they will get in trouble. I don't beat my kids. I don't beat the hell out of me. I don't do that to my kids. I take stuff from them. I make them sit down and look at them in their face and tell them I'm not bothered by them, bro. I'm not. Baby, they just pretty only two. He just 12. He just, he just a kid. So? They don't learn by you teach them what they're going to learn by. We buy the stuff that they get. We take it away from them when they don't deserve it. You don't throw a fit in Walmart and then you get the praise for it. Sometimes you got to do what your kids screaming in Walmart and that's okay, but not like that. We ain't doing all that. We ain't doing all that. Are you done? Are you sure you done? Wipe your face like a big girl and get all the stress off your face. <coughs> Let's go back to the slideshow. Because we in the truth, man. In the truth, spoiling the hell out of our children. Bring it out. Spoiling them rotten. Bring it out. Spoiling them. Unbelievable. Bring it out. This is supposed to be the truth. That's right, man. Still doing the same damn thing mama did. Let you get away with everything. Let little Junior get away with everything. Bring it out. Ain't instilling in him no character. No perseverance. Not teaching them how to handle adversity. Right. Verbal abusing them. Mentally abusing them. Bring it out. Doing the same damn thing your mama did. Bring it out. Bring it out. With your friends is on. Bring it out. With your friends is on. So I'm um, your whole body. With your friends is on. This is supposed to be the truth. We need to find a better way to discipline our children than to pull them out of damn belt. See, that's too much. See, that, that's too hard, too. Bring it out. That's the only way daddy knew how to discipline. That's the only way mama know how to discipline is just right. pull out a belt. That's right. If the belt work, why, why, why Junior get his ass whooped every week if the belt work? Bring it out. Obviously, something ain't working. That's right. Because he getting towed up every week. Again, who taught you how to be a parent, bro? Who told you how to raise a child? And have you ever considered that? Or you walking down that yellow brick road? Or you doing the same things that your parents did to you to your children? What you teaching Junior, bro? Huh? Other than the school system, television, Instagram, social media, and the cartoons, and the phone, the phone. Which, which, what, what have you taught them to do? What? Yeah. We at home raising our children to be Israelites. Is it is it is it a smart way of he break thinking at home, or is it just man? You put your, you put your tassels on your shirt, your ribbon of blue. You come to church on a Saturday. You good. Bring it out, bring you it good. Out. You good in God eyes. <laughs> Some of us got trapped, bro. We don't want to be parents no more. We wish we could start over. Time travel back. What slide number is this? Six. <clears throat> Next slide. 
Do you know that we were raised a lot? Ninety percent of us was raised with a toxic mother. Right now, mama toxic as hell. But you know we gonna defend mama, bro. You know what I'm saying? We gonna defend mama. We gonna defend mama. But it was certain things that mama was doing in the house that she should not have been doing. But in society, society let her get away with it. But there's certain things that mama shouldn't be doing. And this is this is toxic. These are generational curses that got us in the truth. The women with children with toxic behaviors, toxic characteristics. With fringes that come into church every Saturday with fringes have not dealt with this yet. Four years in the truth, five years in the truth, seven years in the truth have not healed from this. She ain't healed from this. Not yet. Just brushing it off. Toxic mothers. Toxic mothers use usually inherit certain behaviors based on how they was raised by their mama. Right. Or their grandmother. Apple don't fall far from the tree. Typical toxic mother symptoms includes, you know, the sister, you know, lacks empathy. You know, if you're raised by a mother that lacks empathy, that destroys a child. That's right. It damages them. These sisters in the house dismissing their child feelings. Dismissing them. Mama in the house, verbally abusive, bro. Belittling with the language. Bring it out. Belittling. Verbal abusive. Sister still ain't healed from it. So what she do to her children? See, that toxic mother, she gonna give conditional love. Not unconditional, but conditional love. You know, mama, you know what I'm saying? She show love when she wants something in return. You know, mama gonna play you, bro. You know, she gonna she gonna show love when she wants something. That's right. The toxic mother is hard, man. Ooh, it's hard, man. It's hard for her to take responsibility for effing up, for not being on her A game. Boy, she gonna make that excuse. Her leg, the job, it was you. you know? Bring it out. Just, just, just everything. That, 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 that. So, what you gonna do when it's time for you to raise a child? You gotta understand. Ninety percent of our day, we are operating in a subconscious mind. Basically, when you operating all day, you can be driving on. You can be driving on forty five and be at the beach. You're not even that. Bring it out. You can be at the job, and for some of the brothers. He real live in the game. It's 4th and 12 in his mind, and he in the game, and he got to score the game when it touchdown. He at work, though. He at work. But in his mind, it's 4th and 12. Yeah, Super Bowl. On the clock. He in the game. That's right. You do realize that you operating that. So a lot of the times, we're operating in that programming that we got from mom and daddy. Don't even realize it. And then we'll snap out of it and try to change it. But then the 90% of the time, we operate in the same program that mom and daddy gave us. Bring that out. The same programming. And sisters, why you think that you're doing this in that house with your fringes on? Probably 10 times out of 10, that's what your mama was doing. Or your grandmama. Or whoever woman figure that raised you. Or your father figure. Toxic man. Toxic as hell. In the truth. Households. Toxic. The woman in the house. Toxic. Never take responsibility. Bring it out. See that toxic mama, you know what I'm saying? She's a compulsive liar. Mama gonna lie to you. Bring it out. That toxic one. Mama gonna play you. She gonna play on your emotions. Right. She gonna play on your feelings. Compulsive liar. Mama in the house. And the reason why she's a compulsive liar to persuade you to think a certain way. Normally, mama gonna persuade you to think the way how she how she feel. That's right. Or what she think. Or what she want. Or how she feel.
Israelites watching the class, I'm like, yeah, that's my mom. Man, that's my granny. And then when that light bulb click off in your mind, I want you to realize the similarities that you're doing that your mama did, or the similarities that you do. I'm talking about the unconscious stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like the unconscious stuff. You just do it and you got to click back at it. Look at your father. Look at your mother. Bring it out. Next slide. The toxic mother, man, it can, can, can always downgrade the child. Always. You ain't it. I ain't it. Bring it out. And you ain't gonna be it. Bring it out. Talking to the daughter crazy. Talking to the son crazy. Not building them up. Not with not with tenderness and delicateness and her being that side of the woman's side that the family need, she in there causing division. Comparing the whole family against each other. Downgrading the children. That's right. Confrontational. Argumentative. Manipulative behavior. In the house manipulating everybody in the damn devil. Manipulating everybody. Toxic as hell. They're going to give you something to hold their reward over your head. Right. So when it's time to pay up, you better pay up. Right. And then when everything is done, and when everything is over, mama gonna, that toxic mama going to sock to them tears, man. That's right. She going to sock. Because all the other plans of manipulation, all the other plans of trickery, then, then, then fell out the window. Now it's time to flip the script. Time to flip. This is real talk. And y'all think this not going on in the house with the people that go to church on a Saturday with the fringes and claim that God chose them? Yeah. You think this ain't going on? You really think the sister is not fighting with this? You really think the brother is not fighting with this? Because he ain't dealt with it yet. Well, she up. hasn't dealt with this. We got a whole new generation that's going to come up after us. Right. And they're going to be exactly who you are. Bring it out. A residual image of who you are. Of what you teach them. Of what you embody in them. Of your habits. Of your good. Of your bad. They're going to soak it all up. Trust me. Their mind is on record for the first seven years of life. Go back to the show. Next slide. What about the toxic father? Bring it out. Bring it out. You know, one thing that I realized is we hear, you know, that daddy did this because he loved you. Heard that before? Bring it out. Mama did that because she loved you. That's the reason why mama, that, that's her excuse for not being a mother to you and being so non affectionate and not raising you because because she loves you. Uh uh. Daddy did that because his daddy a damn fool. Daddy don't love you. Daddy's. Daddy was a damn fool. Mama, mama was selfish as hell. Selfish. And think about us. I just I'm trying to get you to realize this is real talk. It says toxic father, toxic fathers usually inherit his subconscious behavior or certain behavior best based on how they was raised by their father or their grandfather. Or in this case, a single parent home in these times raised by their mama. Right. That's who he is when he grow up. Typical toxic father symptoms. You know, you know, man, the seventies and the eighties and stuff, man, the nineties and stuff. Dad just left. Just abandoned me. I'm out. 
you know, you know, you know, daddy in that house uh, can't, can't, can't control his spirit. He in the house, major mood swings. Damn near loco. Substance abuse, verbal abuse, physical abuse, emotional manipulation, a compulsive liar. Next slide. That toxic father, he not gonna discipline you because he love you. When he discipline you is because he mad. I'm gonna say that again. See, see what the men do is the men, the real toxic men, they not gonna discipline their children because they love them. They gonna discipline their children when they pissed off. And that's how they discipline when they angry or when they upset or when they mad. Not rational at all. That's right. Bring it out. Going loco. Because he mad. That's when normally the discipline comes. Toxic men, they usurp their God-given natural power just in their voice alone. That's all the power that a man needs is in his voice. Changes the whole aspect of everything. That's right. right? But what a toxic man going to do, he going to usurp his, his, his power by his aggression. By his anger. By his control. My way or the highway mentality. Boy. Bring it out. Boy. Bring it out. It's a little bit too real today. Bring it out. It's a little bit too real. That toxic father, man, that toxic man, he not going to allow happiness when the rest of the family happy when he mad. Boy, Bring he out. mad, everybody else in the house got to get it. Bring it out. Everybody good. <laughs> Everybody chilling just came from outside. You know what I'm saying? Everybody in the house get a whooping. Hey, what the what, 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 what? Everybody in the house got to get it. What did everybody in the house do? You know, well, just really, you know, room one clean. You know, or like, you know, something. But because he mad. Bring it out. It's a bloodbath. Everybody holy in the church. Everybody say it. What Granny say again? She said, I'm, I'm what? Everybody blessed and highly favored in the church. Bring it out. Bring it out. But sister, you haven't recovered from this, man. You know that you went through trauma for the first however long that you was in your house? Bring it out. Trauma. You know how much that broke you emotionally? Physically? Spiritually, you know what that did to your confidence? You know what that did to your morale? Bro, do you know what that did to you, man? And when brothers and sisters come into the truth, whatever trauma that they have on them, they get exposed. Bring it out. Bring it out. Get brought to the light. I'm just trying to help, man. I'm just trying to help. You think you gonna? You think the kingdom of heaven is for you? If this is on you, Bring it out. if this is on you, it's like I say, man. You know, brothers and sisters are dealing with this right now. That's right. But they, 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 they eating what they supposed to. They, they, they drinking what they supposed to. They showing up to every Shabbat. They keeping all of the feast day. They keeping God commandments. Toxic as hell in the house. Right. Toxic. No room for growth. No room for love. Light. No room for. Bring it out. Give me the next video. And and play it. Teaching the responsibility, but really, you're holding them back. And listen to the sister. One thing I don't do is I don't tell people how to raise their children. I don't tell people what they can and what they cannot do with their children. All I tell them to do is raise them right. Your way different than his way. He might not be able to communicate with his children like he needs to. 
She may not be able to give the love and affection as she needs to learn. But do not, and this is for the ones that was raised bad, do not do the same thing that your parents did to you to your children. Because how you came out, your children are going to be worse. Bring it out. Play the video. It's hard to pay bills and try to survive at the same time or prepare to go into life at the same time. When I was growing up, and I had great parents, but, you know, there is a lack of financial education in the black community, period. So I didn't get taught that. I didn't get taught about credit. I didn't get taught about banking. I didn't get taught about bills. I didn't get taught about none of that stuff. I had to figure that out as life went on. No, my mother never charged us rent, and anytime I needed to go back home, I was able to go home rent free. Um, and I appreciate my mother for that. But I know a lot of people who are charging their kids rent. I know they are giving them a crap load of responsibility, and I think that's bull crap. You're not teaching them responsibility. You're being unsupportive, and it's not right. Now, yeah. it's different when you have irresponsible kids or you have disrespectful kids or you have kids that have money and they go out and buy other things and they're not preparing themselves to get out into the world. They're not going to understand why you want to teach them some type, type of responsibility by charging them some type of light bill or something like that. But to charge a child who is trying, who is working, who is in school, rent to me, I don't think they should do that. And other cultures, they do not do that. They will let, they allow their kids to stay with them as long as they may need be. And they help them get themselves together. They help them get their credit together so they can be able to go out to the world on their own. A lot of other families even help their kids get their first apartment, pay their first six months rent, even help them get their own car, their first car. You know, our culture really lack in financial knowledge. And I think that making our kids responsible for responsibilities that they can barely handle or they have not been taught to handle does not make sense. So that's my number one. Charging your children rent when they need you the most is not okay to me. Another thing that black parents need to stop doing to their children is impacting fear on them. Causing fear. Making them scared to speak to you. Making them scared to talk to you. Always tell them that they're disrespecting you when they're voicing their opinion. I don't think that's okay. I think that your parents, if anybody, should be the people you should be able to be yourself with, should be the people you should be able to talk to. I remember growing up, I was very voiceful, and my mom did not like the things that I had to say. Sometimes I would just be like, Mom, why did it? Because I said so. That's not an answer. I need to know I'm new to this life. You've been here 30 something years. I've been here 15. Teach me. Tell me why I can't do this. Tell me why this is not acceptable. When your kids are asking you why, they don't mean any harm. They're not disrespecting you. Explain to them. Because you said so, it's not an answer. You know what I mean? And when your kids come to you to talk to you and you and they tell you how they feel about you and you say that you feel disrespected and you get upset and you want to put them on punishment or even hit them, that's crazy to me. That's you trying to cause fear. That is you trying to tell them you can't say these things to me. You can't talk to me. Um, you cannot reveal how you feel about me. And that's not okay because a lot of kids are living in households where they're unhappy and they're not allowed to explain their unhappiness without their parents getting upset with them or without feeling like they're going to get in trouble. Black families need to be open with each other. That's, we already do not have counseling. We already do not have ment mental health um, places that help us with our situations and our conditions in our neighborhoods. The last thing we need is to not be able to talk to each other. So black families need to open up more and allow their children to be able to explain to them and talk to them about how they feel. And that can really cure a lot of situations. I think it will help us with our dysfunction in our family and our cultural issues if you allow children to talk to you, even if it hurts. Another thing that black parents need to stop doing to their children is embarrassing them in public and on the internet. That is something that I've seen go on for like the last past three, four years. Um, people have been beating their kids and punishing their kids on the internet. And what you don't understand is when that is all over with, when you guys have made up and you're no longer mad at your child, that video is still out there. That memory is still embedded 
in the other kids' heads and everybody's head. The whole world seen it. So when you get over it and you and your child are happy again and you're no longer angry with them, they still have to deal with the day-to-day -day consequences of what you put on the internet. Okay? They do not deserve a lifetime punishment for whatever reason. That would lead that is what leads to suicide, depression, everything. It is not okay to discipline your kids for the whole world to see. That is something that is private, that is something that is personal. Do you want somebody to put a video of you getting your ass whooped on the internet? Of course not. Stop doing that to your children. Another thing that black families need to do is to start preparing your kids for the world. Stop kicking your kids out at 18 and assuming that they already know what to do. They don't know what to do, okay? They don't know. I plan on, my son is five right now. I teach my son little things. My son puts the trash bags in the trash can and he is responsible for putting the toilet tissue on the roll and he also is responsible for putting water in the refrigerator when there's no more. I plan on taking him to the bank throughout life. I plan on taking him to the bank when I go. I plan on taking him to the bank at 15 and teaching him how to open up a checking account, teaching him how to save money, show him what I do with my money and how I go about it. Um, teach him some things. Teach your kids those things. Teach your kids how important it is to at least have a credit score. I always tell people all the time, if you don't have the cash, you need to have the credit. And if you don't have the credit, you need to at least have the cash. We were not given the tools. But the problem is, we know we weren't given the tools. So why aren't we getting the tools? If you know that there's tools out there and they weren't given to you, you need to go get them. And that's what I'm doing with my life. I know that we weren't set up with the financial um, plan that we, we should have been set up with. I know we weren't given the knowledge that we should have been given. So since I know that, I'm gonna go get it. I know what's there. That's something that really, really bothers me about black families. A lot of things that's going on, we know better and no one's doing anything about it. Set your kids up with a financial plan. Show them everything that you learned from your mistakes. Show your kids everything that was not shown to you that you learned later on in life. Okay, last one. Stop enabling your children. Stop enabling your kids. I was in a relationship with my son's father for a long time. And when I tell you that his mother was the biggest enabler I ever met in my life, she was still going to his doctor's appointments at 21 years old, filling out his paperwork, bringing in his social security card. He didn't even know his social security number. She knew it. She did not teach him anything. Stop enabling your kids because then they become somebody else's nightmare or somebody else's responsibility or they be your responsibility when you're tired of them. When you no longer want to do for them and you get upset and you're like, oh, you should know this. No, they don't know it because you've enabled them their whole life. Stop cleaning your kid's room at 15 and 16 and 17 years old. Stop running to their rescue at 20 something years old. Okay? Now, I'm not saying don't be there for them. I'm not saying do not help them. But helping is when you have a thousand dollar bill and I pay 500 and you pay the other 500. Helping is not when I pay the full thousand. Stop enabling your children. Teach them, then let them practice what you taught them. Go back to the slideshow. Go all the way to the beginning. Like slide four, something like that. Maybe six. This is just a wake up call for the brothers and the sisters in the Israelite community, in the Israelite nation. This is a wake up call that we must do things different. Because if we don't, they're going to be worse than us. Right now. Just think about the ones that's my age. Think about all the things that you had to figure out on your own. Think about it. Everything that you had to mess up 15 times just to get it right, just to figure it out. Why, 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 why mom and daddy didn't do that for us? Bring it out. Now, 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 now you're looking at yourself. Is that what you're doing to your children? Yeah. Right now. Is that what you're doing? Now, 
You ain't gonna be able to do anything and everything, man. You know what I'm saying? But understand the basis here. Go to the next slide. What are you doing? Are you doing the same thing that your parents did to you? To raise your children? What you teaching them, man? What are you really teaching them? Next slide. And, 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 and don't forget this, the toxic mothers and fathers. We inherited that bad in our community, in our nation. We inherited that bad. Deep, deep trauma in our family. Craziness. And we prolonging it. And we carrying it on. Last video. And we're going to pull out some scriptures. And, 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 and again, put this, this is, this is, this is mother. Put mother and father here. Listen to the damage that it does. Listen to the trauma that this causes. Listen to the emotional distress that people keep for the rest of their lives. Yeah. All because of their upbringing. Play the video. Testimony. I am a survivor. And I just want to let people who are going through this abuse or who have escaped it, that they're not alone in their journey. So, as I was saying, I want to talk about how you should be aware of the black toxic narcissistic mother. Now, and what bothered you as well? Home, my mother, she ran it with an iron fist. And in my community, in the black community, I noticed that a lot of black women, they're over dramatic and they really don't understand how to voice themselves in a civilized manner. A lot of them are materialistic, they're moody, and at times they get, you know, come across as unstable. But even in society as a whole, you know, not, not I'm not talking about race right now, but you know, they, we have so many women walking around with unchecked emotional, mental, and spiritual issues that it's not even funny. If everything is quiet, says so many brothers and sisters are walking around today with unchecked mental, physical, spiritual issues that hasn't been that has not been checked today. Hasn't been checked. Running rampant in the truth. Twelve gates of heaven. Judah, that's me. Unchecked mental, physical, and spiritual abuse. Unchecked. Have not been healed from it. Play up. Conspicuous. But a lot of these things, they take root in a woman's childhood. They're the result of, you know, many women experiencing abuse, um, molestation, or just being in a broken home with her mother, you know, being the strong, you know, black woman as a head of household. And when I talk about the whole broken home issue, I mean, like, the, the strong black woman, the matriarch, she has broken down any male influence in the house. So if you do have your father there, he's, you know, he's an enabler. He's very timid, he doesn't say much. He doesn't want to argue, he just wants peace. He leaves the room, he's not, he leaves any chance he gets. Or if your stepfather's in the house, she belittles him, she puts him down. No male role in this type of family structure has a say so. It's whatever the, Black narcissistic mother say, whatever she say goes. And if it doesn't go, and if somebody wants to stand to her, here comes the histrionics. Here comes the belligerent attitude. Here comes the abuse. Because she is the black narcissistic toxic mother, she would not she would not hesitate to resort to violence. 
And I mean using them hands. She will do it. So basically, you know, doing doing childhood is is very it's a very precious and fragile time for you know spiritual and behavioral disorders to really take root and to form in a person. And you know, this results in a lot of black women who come from this type of family structure. It results in them trying to find an outlet from the pain they experience in these toxic environments. They may look to drugs, they may look to, you know, sex, they may look for, you know, addiction. It takes root because they're looking for an outlet. They're looking for some way out. They're looking for something to fill the void that they feel inside their soul, inside their heart. And they can't go to their mom because the mom is the one who is abusing them. The, the mom is the one who's belittling them. The mom is the one who's, you know, bullying them. The mom is the one who's basically causing this big hole to take form and has been causing it since they were little children. And nine times out of ten, the women from this type of structure, the matriarch, the head of the household, a black mother, she will recant stories of how she was scarred and how she was done wrong throughout her whole life. So she lives in this perpetual state of, I got to get them before they get me. You know, and that goes for anybody and everybody. And her toxicity is basically like a raging forest fire looking to consume anything that's in its path. That's why from this type of family dynamic comes a lot of people pleasers and comes a lot of flying monkeys. Because nobody wants to be in their forest fire, so, so to speak. Nobody wants to grab a water hose and put it out. If anything, they want to add, they want to add gasoline to the fire. Pause it. Because Let's go to the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And 12 verse 1. Think about it. Think about brothers. How many times we done hit the street corner and be like, oh yeah, man, I was dealing with this sister. The sister was wicked as hell. Bring it out, bring it I was out. dealing with the brother, man. The brother bugged out, man. The brother wicked as hell. Bro, that's probably somebody, mama, and daddy. That's right. That's right. Think about that. That's right. That's probably somebody's parents. That's right. And if they wicked and if they bugged out, what are they doing to their children? Bring it out. <laughs> See what I'm saying? And everybody in here, everybody watching, man, everything that we just watched so far, you ain't got to raise your hand, but just say it to yourself. Hell yeah, yeah, that's me, bro. That's right. Real talk. That's me. And I'm still feeling that today. I still ain't been healed from that traumatic experience from my mother and my father, my grandmother, my grandfather today. And the faster that you do it, the faster you'll be able to move on. Read this. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Go ahead. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. It's a reasonable service, man, to sacrifice your life. Read. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Especially telling us, man, that everything that we learned, man, do not be conformed to what you learned. That's right. And this is on the negative scale. If it's positive, keep it. But this is on the negative scale. Be not conformed to what you learned or the ways of this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Some of us in that household, we got to transform our minds. You acting like your daddy, bro. You acting like your mama. All the bad characteristics, though. Be renewed in your mind. Be renewed in the way that you think, the way that you act. Read. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Me, Ephesians 4 and 17. Ephesians 4 and 17. Again, man, this is realism, bro. I'm bringing it, I'm bringing it to real. Because if we don't, these Israelites, man, they're going to be masking everything. That's right. They're going to be hiding everything. 
of that real stuff, of that real things that be going on in these houses, man. Because how it is, they can just put tassels on their t-shirts and come to church. Read this. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 17. Read. This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, and the vanity of their minds. That's why we got to have a complete mindset reset change on the way that we thinking things over, and especially the way that we raising our children. That's right. We got to rethink that. We have to rethink that. The way that we're raising our children. And for the brothers in the spiritual aspects, man. What kind of shepherd are you, bro? What kind of leader are you? What kind of father are you to the children of God? Read. Having the understanding darkened. See, because why you think mama did what she did or daddy did what he did? Grand, granny and grandpa and them. They did the best that they could. But they operated in a way because they having their, their understanding darkened. Read. Being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. And then, you know, mama and daddy, they were just blind, man. Cousins and them, auntie and them was just blind. But you don't have to be blind. That's right. You can break that. You can change that. You can bring something different to the table. A lot of people won't agree with it. But your God will read who being past feeling have given themselves over unto the sinlessness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so, be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Yahweh Shai. Keep reading. That ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt. According to the deceitful lust, read and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That's, and, and that's why I'm pulling these scriptures, man, to help the people understand, bro. We gotta heal from this, man. That's right. And we must be renewed in the spirit of our minds. We must heal from this. Or your little sweet baby, or your little junior, with that bright future, you'll be the one to mess it up. Read. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Change having a change of mind. The way that we think and how we handle things. Read. And that ye put on the new man. Which after God is created in righteousness. And true. And holiness. Give me Proverbs 20 and 11. And when we're dealing with our children. I just ask everybody. Just keep it real with them. That's the best thing that you can do. Is be honest. Have that open line of communication with your children you be honest with them they be honest with you you have that type of relationship with your children that's when you walk around child seven years old got a full-fledged conversation that's right because the child getting built up but as parents we must understand this and as leaders we must understand this as well about our own children read this Proverbs chapter 20 verse 11. Read. Even a child is known by his doing. Read again. Even a child is known by his doing. You know that child, man, it's either going to be bad or good. You need to figure out which one that he, he or she is. That's right. Figure it out. That's right. And don't be lying to yourself. Junior good. Junior sweet. Bring it out. Junior granddaddy was probably a... Junior granddaddy was a was a was a notorious bootlegger back in the back 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 in the thirties. Right. He still got that gene in him. You know what I'm saying? Get to know your children. Don't just treat them like an object. Know them. Get to know them. Read it again from the top. Even a child is known by his doing. So you can already know how to operate. Even a child won't let you know who he is. A child won't let you know who she is. Right. Body works. But mama, man, mama gonna ma mama, mama gonna let it slide. Cause it's junior and princess. Even a child gonna let you know by their work. Read. Right. Whether his work be pure. Whether he but whether whether he good, read. And whether it be right. So you gotta know how to deal with. It. Israelites, man, we just we just let it go. The child won't let you know exactly who he is. You got to deal with him or her accordingly. Matthew 7 and 16. You know, just, 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 just one scripture precepts today. Just to bring something out. 
But I want people to start healing from these generational curses that they have been passed down by their toxic families. Right. Bring it out. And illegitimate families. We must recover and we must rebuild and we must heal from that with the fringes on. Read this. St. Matthew chapter 7 verse 16. Read. You shall know them by their fruits. And when you look at your children, man, deal with them accordingly, bro. You know them by their fruits. Deal with them accordingly. For you lead us, you know the people that's behind you. You know their fruits. Deal with them accordingly. Read. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bring a forth good fruit. The good tree gonna bring good fruit. Read. But a corrupt tree bring a forth evil. Fruit. But that corrupt tree gonna bring evil fruit. Read. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Give me Proverbs fifteen and five. Very important how you raise your children. Very important what you are instilling in them. Very important about what you are teaching them. What kind of character you are building in them. What kind of integrity that you are building in them. The lifestyle that they are living. It depends on you. The economic skills that they have. The mental fortitude that they have. The mental capabilities to handle adversity is going to be taught by the mothers and the fathers. How are they going to be able to operate in this life when they are not in your house should be taught by the mother and the father. Bring it out. No, sir. Not these times. Come on, man. Come on. Some of you have been struggling with your children. Struggling. And you won't face it. Deal with it today. Read this. Proverbs chapter 15 verse 5. Read. A fool despises his father's instruction, but he that regard of reproof is prudent. So you know what you're dealing with, sister and brother, and you can deal with it accordingly. Is it a natural listen or is it a, a, or is it a hard head? Bring it out. That helps you be a better parent. That helps you be a better father. You may need to change your approach with June Bug. That's right. You may need to change your approach with princess. That's right. But if you don't examine the child, and if you're not being a father or a mother to the child, you're not going to know how to move your damn self. That's right. That's right. Take heed, man. Let's take heed on this. First Peter 3 and 7. Coming to an end. First Peter 3 and 7. Out. Think about what you watched today. Think about what you saw today and be real with yourself and ask you, are you a product of it? If you grew up where, where we grew up at, it's 97%. That's right. Damn near 100%. Roughly. The age that our parents came up in, man, a crack epidemic. Bring it out. Bring it out. You know, just the. the the, the Crips and Bloods and the, and, the, and the cocaine monsters, you know what I'm saying? The, 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 damn, the, 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 the damn baby mamas and baby daddies started with them. That's right. Think about this stuff, man. Are you thinking that we can mask it with some branches? Let's get spiritual. Read this. First Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Read. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. When you're dealing with your child, man, obviously this is for the wife. When you deal with your child, deal with them according to knowledge. Build them up. Train them up. Give them something that's going to stick with them for the rest of their life. Deal with them according to knowledge, not emotions. Read. Dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Let's go to Titus 2 and 3. The book of Titus, the second chapter. Verse 3, read that. Titus, chapter 2, verse 3. Read. The aged women likewise, 
that they be in behavior as become of holiness, not false accusers, not given too much wine, teachers of good things. How many of us had a mama like this or a grandmama like this? Bring it out. Holy, holy, a good example at all times, not false accusing. Not giving too much wine. Let's, let's, let's just let's let's just call this substance abuse. There wasn't no substance abuse. It taught you some good things that you still use to this day that they brought you up on. So that your mother or your grandmother or the woman figure in your life was holy, wasn't a false accuser, wasn't manipulated, verbal abuse or uh, mentally abusive. Uh, you know, not false accusers. Not giving too much wine, you know, I'm going to just call this, you know, regular wine. I'm going to just, you know, substitute this in with substance abuse wine, right? And teach us of good things, of good things. You know, mama and daddy was probably in our life, man, probably put food on our table. And probably we never had to worry about anything. We probably always had shoes on our feet. We probably always had clothes. And we probably never missed a meal growing up. And mama and daddy did all that and still didn't teach you a damn thing. Right. Understand that that can happen. Bring it out. That can happen. Provide shoes, education. Got you a car when you were 16. Got, got, got the three birthday parties. And, and, and it got you PlayStation 18s. Got you all the mad games. And got you and your sisters everything that you wanted. And you never wanted for nothing. And then when it was time for you to get out in the world, you got ate up like a damn minnow with a shark. That's right. That can't happen. Don't let it be you. Read. That they may teach the young women to be so. And you see what the woman job means, man? The woman, they're all mothers. Especially if you a mother, if you a single parent, you got to do it double time. If you are a, or if you a mother, that is with a man or his father, you have to be able to teach the young women or the young men to be sober-minded. That means you're building character in them. That means you are instilling intangibles in the child that's going to help the child thrive through the rest of their life. Tangible skills and non-tangible skills. Tangible means you can touch it. Non-tangible means you cannot touch it. That means skills that we need to have. Teach them to be sober-minded. Read. To love their husbands. Read again. To love their husbands. Read again. To love their husbands. You know, mama wasn't married, bro. Right. Granny. Granny today. Granny not with the man no more. Right. Yeah. Pretty much everybody granny single. That's right. right. That's right. Think about this. Pretty much, you look at your granny or your grandmother. She's single. Right. Well, you think she taught her daughter to love her husband? Bring that up. She give her any skills, techniques, advice on how to love her husband? You know, sisters they want to be white. They want to be a wife real bad until the wife duties get to kicking in. Bring it out. Some of the sisters can't handle it. Read. To love their children. Read again. To love their children. Read again. To, to love, love their, their children. children. What, 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 what? The, the. Hopefully you can understand where I'm going with this, bro. A lot of us are broken. That's right. In the truth of friends, is a lot of us are broken. And haven't been healed yet. And have not been taught yet. And we're running around masking it because we had to feast the tabernacles. That's right. Uh, kingdom of heaven. The Passover and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Decked out, Shabbat. <laughs> but broken, man. Generational curses. Passing those same ideologies down to our children. To teach them to love their husbands, they, their children, to be sober minded. To love their own children, man. Read. To be discreet. To be discreet in the house, man. Read. Chase. Keep us at home. Keep us at home. Read. Good. Obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. When you ask the sisters, man, how many of us, how many of, how many of the sisters learned this from their mother? How many sisters learned this from their mother? 
not to be false accusers, not giving too much wine, teaches the good things at home. That you teach the young men and the young women to be sober, teach them how to love their husbands, teach them how to love their children, how to be discreet, chaste, keep us at home. You know, mama was condoning us being out all damn night. That's right. Mama was condoning that. Not, not, not bringing you, not bringing it home. Mama was condoning you being home, being out all night. Condoning it. Keep us at home, good, obedient to their husbands. What sister, mama taught them how to be obedient to their husband. Who, 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 who? This is rhetorical questions, man. I'm not saying that we all like this. But again, ninety-seven percent, right? Let the word of God be not blasphemed. Give me Ephesians 6 and 1. We coming to an end here. Coming to an end here soon. I'm just showing the severity of this. I'm showing the I'm showing the the uh the uh the seriousness of this. Of that if we don't repent from this, you can kiss the kingdom of heaven goodbye. Right. You can kiss it goodbye. You can kiss it goodbye. You gotta deal with this before you leave earth. Read this. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. Read. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. In verse 4, man, this is what we need to stop doing in our house, too. It, and again, man, I'm not telling people what to do. Just listen to the message. Get what you can from the message. And apply it to your life the best way that we have to do it, right? right? But the normal environments that we grow up in, the father and the mothers, especially the father, this is what the fathers do in the household. Read. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. Fathers have a bad time with doing that. That's right. Break it a bad habit with doing that. Provoking the wrath in their own children. Provoking the wrath in his wife. Provoking wrath in her in, 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 in his daughter. Provoking wrath in his son. All because he cannot control his emotions. All because he cannot control his spirit. You don't do that, man. You do not you do not do that. And that's how all of our daddies was. Read. But bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Bring them up, build them up. Don't provoke them to wrath. Build them up. Don't provoke them to anger. Don't provoke them to anger. Build them up. That's right. Teach them. Teach them, Mark. Just because you mad don't mean you can take it out on everybody else. That's right. Don't provoke wrath on everybody. Build them up. Teach them. Some ox raised by their mama very emotional in the house. Colossians 3 and 21. Go. Gotta fix that. Got to fix that. We got to fix that, brothers. And it's going to say the same thing over here. Read this. Colossians chapter 3, verse 21. Read. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. How many of us, man, in that household discouraged as hell about the father? That's right. Discouraged. When he provoking that wrath, when he provoking that anger, when your mama provoking that wrath, and your mama provoking that anger, it discourages the children. That's right. It discourages them. You thinking you doing it for discipline, you discouraging June Bug. Bring it out. You doing it because your mama taught you how to do it, but you discouraging the princess because your mama was discouraging you. Because right. your daddy was discouraging you. Bring it out. Read again. Read verse, read verse 21 again. I don't think they heard that. Verse 21. Read. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger. Don't provoke the children to anger. Read. Lest they be discouraged. All their confidence is going to go out the window. That's right. Bring it out. Get in the shell like a hermit crab. Don't want to talk. That's right. Scared to move. Scared to take a step. Bring it out. Scared to take a step back. Scared to look to the left. Scared to look to the right. Bring it out. I'm going to just stay in my room all day. Bumping. Put on the mat all day. Read again. Read again. Fathers, 
Provoke not your children to anger. Provoke not your children to anger, fathers. And this, you know, this is the book of Colossians, bro. But just stay with me. Read. Lest they be discouraged. Lest they be what? Lest they be discouraged. Lest they be what? Lest, Lest they be discouraged. This is what you should do. Proverbs 22 and 6, brothers and sisters. Check it out. Don't provoke them to wrath unless they be discouraged. This is what we should be admonishing the nation to do. To heal and get back this, get back our parenting skills back to the right balance that it needs to be. Read this. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. Read. Train up a child in the way he should go. Read again. Train up a child in the way he should go. Read again. Train up a child in the way he should go. Build them up, sister. Build them up. You see the same thing in you, in her. That's right. You see the same thing in you, in your son. Make a change. Bring it out. Don't let him be like you. Don't let her be like you. When she give you that first instance as a child, when he give you that first instance as a child, that he your son, that he your daughter, that, that she your daughter, them same habits, them same characteristics, change it, man. Change it. Deal with it. Train up a child in a way that he or she may go read. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. See, you got Job 11 and 6. The scriptures say that it's things they are they are double to what that is. A false balance is an abomination for the Lord. He's going to give it to you on the right hand side. Right. He's going to give it to you on the left hand side. If you train up your child like you're supposed to, when he get old, he's not going to depart from it. That's right. If you train up your child in a way that he not supposed to or she not supposed to when they get old they not going to depart from it right. listen to that listen to that yeah you building them up you training them up you could be training up a monster that's right an emotional abusive little child you training him up to be an emotional manipulating abusive man when he grow up that's what you're training so you can either train it on the left hand side or you can train it on the right hand side. Read it again. Verse 6. Read it again. Verse 6. Read. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Give me Proverbs 13, 24. Very serious. Very, very sensitive topic. Very sensitive lecture. But it got to get brought out. Or else we're going to be in the truth. We're continuing the same cycle. Except this time in the truth. Read this. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 24. Read. He that spared this rod hated his son. Read again. He that spared this rod hated his son. Read again. He that spared this rod hated his son. Is this a belt? Is this rod a belt? Is this rod a switch? An extension cord? A phone cable? A hanger? A broom? Is that what this rod is? Read verse 24 again. Verse 24. Read. He that spared this rod hated his son. He that spared his rod hated his son. Read. But he that loveth him Cast tithe of him be time. Now, 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 give me Proverbs 22 and 15. Now, for the brothers and sisters, you know, I recommend the golden hand. Okay? I recommend it. The golden hand. But I'm going to tell you something about the golden hand. If that's all you got, you might lose your hand. By the time you get done with that child, bring it out, bring it out. Your hand might fall off. That's right. If that's all you got, that's right. That belt, that switch, bring it out. That anger, bring it out. That control, that hanger, that extension cord. If that's all you got, 
You're not really understanding what's going on. Proverbs 22 and 15. Read this. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 15. Read. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. Let's see what that rod is. Read. But the rod of correction. Read again. But the rod of correction. Read again. But the rod of correction. Read. Shall drive it far from him. It's the rod of correction. That's right. It's the rod of correction. Again, I subscribe to that because Junior need that sometime, fam. Right. Junior, Junior probably out of control right now. He need to get Chris Benoit. We still ain't got the Chris Benoit. We need to get the Chris Benoit. Seventeen suplexes in a row. But this rod is not a belt in the Bible. No. <laughs> That's what the scriptures say. Now, go ahead. Do you? I think it's good, but <laughs> this rod, he, he, let's go back, Proverbs 23, 14, I mean, Proverbs 13, 24, let me, let me, let me, let me give it to you, let me show you something, read that, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 24, read, he that spare this rod, hated his son, bro, if you're not even correcting your children, you don't, you don't even mess with them, you hate them, you ain't correcting them, you're not building them up. You're not giving them game. You're not giving them knowledge, wisdom, understanding, instruction. You're just slapping them upside the head. When they leave at your house, they're going to have a bunch of knots on their head, dumb as a box of rocks. Right. Still dumb. Because you're not giving them the rod that he needs. Let's go back. Proverbs 22, 15. That rod is correction. Right. It's correction. We say Moses' rod was different, and then, and then Aaron rod was different. But in Proverbs... Do what it says. Come on, brothers and sisters. Read this. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 15. Read. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. This is a stiff-necked child. Read. But the rod of correction. But the what? But the rod of correction. It's when you step in and you deal with that spirit. And you step in and you deal with that child. That rod of correction. Read. Shall drive it far from him. Proverbs 29, 17. Just watch the way that you're doing things, man. Be more empowering to your children. Be more confidence building in your children. Be more positive to your children. If they need the if they need if if, if, if they need the pooty tang, hit them with the pooty tang, dog. But build them up after you hit them with the pooty tang. Right. But give them the knowledge after you hit them with the pooty tang. Give them, give them, build them up. Train up a child in the way that they should go. Read this. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 17. Read. Correct thy son. Read again. Correct thy son. Read again. Correct thy son. That's all it's saying, man. That's all the rod is. It's just telling you just to correct them, man. Stop letting them get away with every damn thing just because he's two years old. He Bring running game on you when he poop. Bring it out. Running game on you. Bring it out. Just how you was doing your mama. You remember that? <laughs> you remember how you was doing that to your mama? Read. Correct thy son. He said, correct your children, read. And he shall give thee rest. That's all the rod is, man. It's just correction. Read. Yeah. He shall give the light unto thy soul. Proverbs 23, 14. And we out. We done. We got to get healed from this, brothers and sisters. If we don't, we in for a long ride. We got to get healed. And use it as motivation. Use it as encouragement to be a better father. Use it as encouragement to be a better mother. Use it as encouragement to be a better family. Right. Use it as encouragement. Read this. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 13. Read. Withhold not correction from the child. You see how Proverbs 23 and 13 start off with correction? It's like we're holding our correction. We're holding our correction from the child. Read. Withhold not correction from the child. For if thou beatest him with the rod. If you beat him with the rod of correction, read. He shall not die. So, man, why, why are you holding back? Bring it out. You're going to be all right. She going to learn. But you didn't build her up. And that, that was a perfect opportunity to teach him exactly what he did was going was going was going to be a bad thing for him the rest of his life that was a prime opportunity for you to do it but you let it slide you gave him a cookie because he was crying bro 
I'm telling you, man. That's right. I'm telling you. We got to get this fixed. Read verse 13. Verse 13. Withhold not correction from the child. It's the correction, man. He going to correct his child different than he correct his child, different than he correct his child, different than she correct her children. But you got to correct them. That's right. Not verbally abuse them. Not belittle them. Not emotionally abuse them. Not compulsive lie to them. Not tell them a story to get them on your side. Not to be not not to be in that house acting like a damn maniac. But correct them, man. Correct them with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Read. For if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. Thou shalt beat him with the rod and shall deliver his soul from hell. That's what you're doing, man. That's what you're doing. When you're correcting them, you're delivering his soul from hell. You're delivering her soul from hell. Now, I go back to the slideshow. We done. I got, I got this one last question for everybody. This is serious. Go back to the, go back all the way up right there. This is my question. You know, this is my question. What's your motherhood skills like, sister? What's your wife skills like, sister? What's your fatherhood skills like, bro? What's your husband skills like? Divorce rate way too high in the truth. That's right. Bring it out. And brothers is letting it slide. Sisters letting it slide. We got to break these generational curses in our own household or you're going to raise up somebody that's just like you. That's right. In the same bad way. Let's flip the script. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind when you're dealing that household with your children. Shalom.